Hey everyone, Dave here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of every red card in Zendikar Rising. Now I don't know if I'm going to do all of the rest of the colors, but I definitely wanted to look at the red cards at least, because uh, for anyone that knows me, uh, you might know that I have somewhat of an affinity for playing mono red. Uh, in every competitive format, I pretty much play mono red all the time, whether it's... Uh, mono red aggro usually or sometimes big red uh, I pretty much always play these decks and I've had my top tournament results playing mono red so during spoiler season I always like to pay particular attention to the red cards sometimes I actually don't even look at the other cards but I'm gonna go through all of these cards today and let you know what I think of them for either constructed or limited so let's get to it first card is a Coem hellhound it's a one mana zero one. Okay, it has a landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this is the color shifted step links. Uh, step links was a good card. And this is also a good card. Uh, the thing though is we don't have a lot of fetches in standard with this. So that makes it worse. I mean, we have fabled passage, but Usually you're only going to get one trigger off of this per turn, but honestly that's still pretty good. You play this on turn 1, uh, and on turn 2 you play your land and you can attack in with a 2-3. Uh, so I'm talking about this for Constructed. I think this is a good card and I'm looking forward to trying it out in aggro decks and uh, in Limited. Uh, if, you can, if you can find yourself with uh, an aggressive red deck, I would say it's playable in Limited too. Next is a Coem Warrior. It's a 4 5 for 6, and it has Trample, a Minotaur Warrior. Uh, not great, but on the other side of the card, we've got a Coem Teeth. So it's uh, landed, enters the battlefield, tapped, and taps for red. So I don't think this is a constructed playable card, but in limited, um, yeah, it's pretty decent. Like. Neither side is great, but when you have access to either of them, it's definitely playable. And I see it's an uncommon here, so that's somewhat of a clue to say that it's uh, probably pretty decent at least. But uh, yeah, this looks pretty good for a limited to me. Next up we've got Ardent Electromancer. Let's see, a 3-2 for 3 mana, Human Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, add red for each creature in your party. Okay, so let's see. It's a wizard, so you're automatically adding a red. So it kind of costs two. But if you have, say, a couple more members in your party, it becomes essentially free. It's pretty similar to uh, like a Burning Tree Emissary in that respect. Um, I don't think it's as good as Burning Tree Emissary, but... I definitely think it could have some applications, like it can actually even ramp you a little bit if you have a full party. Uh, definitely interesting card, I think it's it seems pretty good for limited. For constructed, uh, it's definitely interesting, I just can't think of a deck right away that it would want to go in, but I could definitely see it being something. Cinderclasm, 2 mana instant, it's an uncommon. And it has Kicker for just a red, so it deals 1 damage to each creature, and if it was kicked, it does 2 damage to each creature instead. Uh, I like this card. Uh, there's been uh, lots of different variations of cards like this that do uh, either 1 or 2 damage to each creature. Uh, notably, this is instant, so that puts it in the better category already, I think. But uh, this, the flexibility is pretty cool, because... Uh, this hits every creature, so it hits yours also, but you have the ability to somewhat control how much damage it's doing, so you could use that to your advantage to maybe kill your opponent's creatures, but not yours, depending on what the board state's like. Probably a good sideboard card too for Constructed. Yeah, I think this card's pretty good. Cleansing Wildfire. This is a 2 mana sorcery. Destroy target land. Its controller may search the library for basic land. Put it onto the battlefield tap. Shuffle the library and draw a card. So this card is really interesting. Uh, it's two mana land destruction in standard. Uh, I think this probably 
will have the most impact in older formats where you you're playing against decks that have very low basic land count so it can it could be an actual stone rain that can trips which is amazing but mm, in standard uh, it's still probably good i mean it draws a card for two mana and it can destroy problematic utility lands in limited honestly in limited it might be pretty good too because there are f quite a few non-basic lands in this set uh, so being able to destroy one of those, maybe take your opponent off of a color and draw a card. Not terrible and limited anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's a sweet card. Expedition Champion, a 3 mana 2 3 human warrior. It gets plus 2 plus 0 as long as you control another warrior. Um, it's fine and limited, definitely not constructed playable. But... Yeah, I'd be happy to draft this. If I, I mean, even if I've got just a couple other warriors. Like a 2-3 two, three for 3 is okay. It's not terrible. But if you have another warrior and it becomes a 4-3 for three, 3, yeah, it's pretty good. I'd play this card. Fireblade Charger, a 1-1 one, one for 1. It's an uncommon goblin warrior, so this definitely interests me. Uh, let's see. As long as it is equipped, it has haste. Okay... And when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Interesting. So it's probably not going to be equipped on turn 1. Probably not on turn 2 either. So I'm not sure how relevant the haste is. The second ability to this is what makes it more interesting to me. Because you could put something like the Colossus Hammer. I think that's what it is. That gives the creature... I don't even remember how much. Plus 12, plus 12, I think. Put that on it. Or cheat it onto it somehow. And then when it dies, it would do like 13 damage to something. I feel like there's some kind of weird cheaty way to make this card good. Uh, it's definitely an interesting card, though. Keep an eye out for this one. Fisher Wizard. Another go Wait, Fisher Wizard, Goblin Wizard. Okay. Uh, it's a 2 mana, 2 1. When it enters the battlefield, you can discard a card if you do draw a card. Interesting. Actually, that seems like it's a 2-1 one for 1, so its body is fine. It's uh, it's aggressive enough to uh, put a clock on the opponent. But uh, just entering the battlefield and rummaging, uh, if there's a way that you can take advantage of the discard, this card could actually be a lot better than I might initially think it is. Because uh, you could discard, I don't know, like a Croxa or something. Yeah, I like this card, actually. In Limited, uh, definitely I would play it, just to smooth out my draws. It's a wizard, so it helps with parties. It's a goblin, so goblins are great. I think this is probably constructed playable uh, if you can take advantage of the discard somehow. Goma Fada Vanguard, a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two human warrior. It's uncommon. Whenever it attacks, target creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal to the number of warriors you control can't block this turn. So if you have just this, then a creature with uh, one or less can't block. Uh, it's a bear. It's pretty good. A pretty good aggressive card. So if you have two warriors, then probably their two drop can't block. Probably I don't expect it to see it in Constructed unless there's some kind of warrior tribal deck. That seems a bit of a stretch to me, but in Limited, definitely a good aggressive card. Yeah, I would, I would play one or two copies of this, I think, if I'm playing an aggressive deck. Grotag Bugcatcher. Another goblin and a warrior. It's a 2-mana 1-2 with Trample. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn for each creature in your party. So it counts itself, so it becomes a 2-2 two, two trample whenever it attacks. Uh, this card seems pretty sweet and limited, actually. Yeah, I mean, if you have... So say you have uh, just two members, so itself and one other, which is, seems quite easy to do. And whenever it attacks, it's a 2-3 or a, it's a 3-2 trample for 3, which is a great rate. And it could potentially be as high as a... Uh, what, a 5-2 trample for 2? That sounds really good. Uh, it makes me start thinking maybe there's some kind of constructed application. Uh, so far, the party mechanic, to me, doesn't jump out as super playable and constructed. But, it, I mean, it definitely could be. 
yeah, I like this card. I would definitely play it in limited, and maybe there's some kind of deck in constructed it could work into. Grotag Night Runner, another uncommon Goblin Rogue, a two three for three. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play this card. Play that card this turn. So it has the uh, what is it? The impulse draw thing for red. I feel like a, a few years ago people would be going nuts over this card, but uh, this this ability in red has become pretty common now. So you're seeing it on a, a pretty aggressively costed three drop at uncommon. Uh, definitely good and limited. I would play maybe two, or I would even play like three copies of this. Uh, and constructed, I don't think so. Uh, it's a goblin rogue, so it works for goblins, works for party, but I don't think it's quite good enough for constructed. Inordinate rage, two mana instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus two until end of turn, scry one. Uh, so it's a common combat trick. The two, like, it's it's fine. I would definitely play this in limited, but I'm not excited about it. It being two mana instead of one, like, I would prefer to have it be plus three, plus two for just one mana and lose the scry, but it's, it's a variation on a red combat trick, and it's fine. I would play one or two copies of this. Got a rare here, Cargan Intimidator. It's a 3-1 human warrior for two mana. 3-1 for two is pretty aggressive. Cowards can't block warriors, classic text. For one mana, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Cargan Intimidator gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Uh, target creature becomes a coward till end of turn, or target warrior gains trample until end of turn. Okay, so say you play this. So I'm looking at this in constructed. In, in limited, definitely it's a three, one for two with abilities. It's definitely playable in limited. So in constructed, let's see, you play it on turn two, so on turn three, you could actually use all three of the abilities if you really wanted to. But so you could make it a four two for two, which is great. Uh, you can make something become a coward, which means that they can't block this or any of your other warriors. You can also give it trample. This card seems pretty great to me. The question though, is it better than two drops that already exist in red for for an aggressive deck in standard? Or, or any constructed format for that matter. I'm not sure if it's better than existing two drops, but it's definitely good. I definitely want to try this card out. The only thing that makes me wary is that it doesn't do anything when it comes into play, and uh, I mean, the game has evolved to the point where you need to be getting immediate value on pretty much anything you do for it to be good enough, and that's not necessarily the case for this thing. Uh, so I'm not sure, but I definitely want to try it out. Kazool's Fury. 3 mana instant, uncommon. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. It deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. Okay, so it's a 3 mana fling. Uh, but then on the back of it, you got a tap land that adds red. Um, interesting. So looking at it for an aggressive deck, I would say it's not great because the land is tapped and you never want your lands to come into play tapped. Uh, 3 mana for a fling isn't great, but... Right now I think it's really hard to evaluate these cards that have lands on the back side because we just don't know quite yet how good they are. Uh, they scare me a little bit actually because they kind of remind me of Companion and that they kind of change the way the game works. Uh, these might actually all just be amazing, but just looking at it right now, uh, neither side really seems worth it. So I'm not excited about this, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's still playable. I, I definitely in limit, I think it's playable and constructed. I'm not sure. Leyline Tyrant. Now this card is probably the red card from this set that's gotten the most attention, I think. Uh, it's a mythic 4-4 flying dragon that costs 4 mana. It says you don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. So that's pretty interesting right there. And when Leyline Tyrant dies, you can pay any amount of red. When you do, it deals that much damage to any target. So, just like many people, I'm also quite interested by this card. It seems really powerful. But at the same time, I'm a little bit afraid that it's just gonna do nothing. But I hope that it does something, because it seems so good. But just the thing is, it's a 4-drop that does nothing when it comes into play unless you have 
a way to generate extra mana on the turn you play it. However, if it doesn't die, then it kind of takes over the game a little bit because you don't really need to play anything else after this because you can just, uh, each turn you can just keep tapping your lands to add red mana and do nothing with it. And then it puts a clock on your opponent because they need to deal with this thing at some point, otherwise when it eventually does die it's going to do a ton of damage to them and probably just win you the game. But I'm not sure if that's actually how this would play out. I feel like a lot of times if this doesn't die right away to just a removal spell, then maybe you pass the turn, uh, add some red mana to your mana pool, and then they kill it with an exile spell or something like that, and you don't even get the trigger, so... I want this to be good, but I'm just not quite sure if it's going to do much. Uh, I definitely am going to try this card out though. I think that uh, it could potentially be best friends with Banefire. Actually, if there's... I can't think of a card immediately, but if there's uh, a card similar to Banefire that you can play at instant speed, that could work really well with this. One of my favorite things to try and do is to make big red decks with a treasure package in them with the Wily Goblin treasure map and Captain Lannery Storm and use that as a, a way to ramp and I feel like that could work quite well with this so I might try that out in Pioneer. So definitely an exciting card and uh, I hope it does something. Magmatic Channeler. A 1-3 human wizard. It's rare and it costs 2 mana. As long as there are 4 more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, Magmatic Channeler gets plus three plus one. Okay, so that's not so hard to do. If there are four or more instants and sorceries, it becomes a four four for two, which is quite good. And you can also tap it and discard a card to exile the top two cards of your library, then choose one of them. You may play that card this turn. So looking at this as an aggressive card uh, in like a spell slinger kind of deck or like a maybe a mono red prowess kind of deck, uh, it just being a 4-4 four, four for 2 that has this ability to uh, get some cards off the top of your deck. It seems good in that regard. Although, if you're using its ability, then it's not going to be attacking, so that kind of pulls in two different directions. Uh, quite notably though, you don't have to pay any mana to use this ability, you just tap it and discard a card. Uh, I'm not sure what deck this wants to go in. It's definitely playable in Constructed and Limited. And probably in multiple different constructed formats. I would want to try this out in some kind of madness type of deck potentially, or something that can take advantage of discarding cards, because this is uh, a, a way to repeatedly discard cards that you can use at instant speed just by tapping it. So that's a deck that I could immediately see this fitting in, but it's definitely a good card. Molten Blast, 3 mana instant, choose 1. Molten Blast deals 2 damage to target creature or planeswalker or destroy target artifact. Okay, so this is most similar to a braid, I guess. I've seen some people call this card a bad, which is kind of funny. Uh, it does kind of just look like a bad a braid, but even, even if that's the case, it's probably still a decent card. I'm not sure how good it is in Constructed, um, mainly because there don't seem to be a lot of artifacts in Standard right now, and outside of Standard you would just play a braid. I guess the one thing that this has going for it is that it can hit Planeswalkers where a Braid can't, but really paying 3 mana to do just 2 damage is not great. So it's it's playable and limited for sure. It would kind of surprise me if it did anything in Constructed. Morog Fury of a Calm. A 6 mana Mythic Minotaur Warrior. It's a 6-6 six, six and it's legendary, so it can be your commander. Each creature you control gets plus one, plus zero for each time it has attacked this turn. Okay, that sounds good to me, and it has a landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. If it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. This card seems amazing. Yeah, I like this a lot. Uh, I, I would like to try this out in a, a big red deck in Constructed, uh, maybe in Standard or Historic or Pioneer. Interestingly, it doesn't say that the landfall ability, it doesn't say uh, it can only happen once per turn. So if you have, say, a fetch land or something, you can have three combats in one turn, which seems quite good. Uh, definitely in Commander, this thing seems great. 
Yeah, I like this card a lot. I'm excited to try this out. Nahiri's Lithoforming. An X spell, so it costs X red red, a sorcery, and it's a rare. Sacrifice X lands. For each land, sacrifice this way, draw a card. You may play an additional X lands this turn. Lands you control enter the battlefield tapped this turn. So it's similar to like a red scape shift, I guess. Not sure what to think of this card because you have to pay X. So whereas scape shift just costs four. So say X is, I don't know, three. You could sacrifice three lands, draw a card and play an additional X lands. But you don't get to look through your deck for the lands. Uh, you just have to hope that you have the ones you need in your hand or you draw them. Right now this card doesn't seem that great to me, but I could be missing something. Like it's definitely an interesting card. Uh, I just feel like it might end up doing nothing in Constructed. Uh, in Limited though, I'm not sure if I would want to play this in Limited either actually. <laughs> Pyroclastic Helion, a five mana common four five, it's a Helion. When it enters the battlefield, you can return a land you control to its owner's hand. When you do, Pyroclastic Helion does 2 damage to each opponent. Okay, so probably not constructed playable, so looking at it for a limited, 4-5 for 5 is fine. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may return a land, so you don't have to. So it allows you to potentially get another landfall trigger uh, if you if you need some lands to trigger it. And it can do 2 damage to an opponent when it comes into play. Uh, yeah, it seems decent. I would probably play like one of these unless I have some way of doing a lot of uh, weird things with lands or I want to keep on picking them up or something. Uh, it seems fine. Relic Robber. Uh, this is a card I've seen before and uh, I really like this one. It's a 3 mana rare Goblin Rogue and it's a 2-2. Uh, it has haste and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player creates a 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact creature token. Oh, that's uh, quite a lot of words there. Uh, with this creature can't block and at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals 1 damage to you. So I definitely think this is playable and constructed and for sure in limited. Uh, it's a 3 mana 2-2, two, two, so ideally it would one of those stats would be 3, but that's okay because it has haste. So looking at it in an aggressive deck and say standard, uh, assuming you play it on turn three and you can get in for some damage, then your opponent's going to be taking at least one damage every turn uh, because they'll have this uh, token that's created by this guy. Uh, the thing that's holding this back though is in both uh, standard, historic, and probably soon to be pioneer, uh, sacrifice decks are very relevant and giving your opponent a 0-1 creature token kind of just gives them gas. So the existence of those decks, I think, will hold this card back. But if sacrifice decks fall out of favor, then I think this card would, could be quite good. Notably, it's a rogue, so if you're doing things with the party mechanic, it works for that. Rockslide Sorcerer, a 4-mana 3-3 three, three uncommon human wizard. When you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, rock slide sorcerer deals one damage to any target. So a 3-3 three, three for 4, uh, the stats are a little bit underwhelming. Uh, however, something interesting about the ability is that it can do a damage to any target. Uh, typically abilities like this only deal damage to a player. Uh, and it also triggers off of wizard spells as, as well as instants and sorceries. So uh, I definitely think this is playable in limited. Uh, I would if I if I'm drafting this, I'm probably looking for as many copies of it as I can get. Uh, and constructed potentially it could go in constructed just because it can hit any target. Um, four mana is kind of a lot to ask for it, but it's also a wizard, so it works with party and with wizard synergies, which there's a few. It's definitely a build around. I think four mana might just be a bit too much, but it's almost there. I think. Royal Eruption, a 2 mana sorcery common, has kicker of 5 mana, so Royal Eruption deals 3 damage to any target. If it was kicked, it deals 5 damage instead. Uh, I like this card. Um, just 2 mana to do 3 damage to anything is great. That's basically the same as a Lightning Strike, however it's sorcery speed, so that's a pretty big drawback. Uh, but if you're flooding out, or you get this late game, you can pay the kicker, so 7 mana essentially, to do 5 damage. Uh, I like this card a lot. 
Uh, definitely, uh, I would play as many copies of this as I could get in limited. And I'm definitely going to try this out in constructed too. Roiling Vortex, a two mana rare enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Roiling Vortex deals one damage to them. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast that spell, Roiling Vortex deals five damage to that player. Interesting, so it's kind of a hate ability there, and you can pay red. Your opponents can't gain life this turn. Interesting card. Uh, it's got a it, so it's a hate card. It punishes players for playing spells which they don't pay mana for. So probably in older formats that are looking to cheat cards into play. And it puts a clock in play by doing one damage to each player during their turn. Interesting. I think this looks like a sideboard card for maybe modern and pioneer. Maybe standard too. I don't know. In limited, I'm not sure. It's probably a fine sideboard card for limited. You could bring in against life gain decks. Even I guess you can just play it to do the the one damage each turn. I think this will probably see playing sideboards at some point. It, it definitely seems like a good card. Scavenged Blade, two mana artifact equipment. It's common. When Scavenged Blade enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and equip for three. Two and a red. Uh, this seems good to me. Definitely, uh, I would play maybe one copy of this Unlimited. I think there are quite a few equipments in this set that attach to a creature when they come into play. That seems to be a new kind of theme that's going on, similar to like uh, an Ember Cleave. Yeah, definitely good for Limited. I don't think it will see play in Constructed unless there's some kind of equipment deck. Which, I mean, I don't think one exists yet, but if one does exist in the future, maybe this could go in. I doubt it, though. I think it's mostly just a limited card. Scorch Rider. Four mana for a common human warrior with kicker two, one in a red. It's a 4-3. When Scorch Rider enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it gains haste until end of turn. Uh, not great. Um, not constructed playable. It's a warrior, so... It works with the party mechanic, but I'm not really excited to play this in limited. Um, I would play it if I've gotten nothing else, but mostly I would see myself playing this in limited if I want to take advantage of uh, having more members in my party. Otherwise, it's probably a pretty low pick. Next up is another rare. We've got Shatter Skull Charger, a three mana giant warrior. It's a 4-3. Okay, so it seems pretty aggressive already. Has Kicker of 2. It has Trample and Haste. I like that. If Shatter Skull Charger was kicked, it enters the battlefield with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. And at the beginning of your end step, if Shatter Skull Charger doesn't have a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, return it to its owner's hand. Uh, seems pretty good. Definitely good and limited. And in Constructed, let's see. If you play it on turn 3, you get a 4-3 Trample Haste. That's going to return to your hand at the end of the turn. Um, there's kind of ups and downs to that. Uh, the, the downside is that since it doesn't stay in play, you're going to have to spend mana again to replay it if you want to get in more damage with it. Uh, the upside is that uh, it could survive through a Wrath and doesn't die to Sorcery Speed removal. However, I feel like the downside outweighs the upside uh, most of the time in that case. So I'm not a fan of playing this as a 3-drop. So let's look at it, at it as a 5-drop if, if you pay the kicker cost. Uh, so it would be 5 mana, 5 for Trample Haste, which is pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit similar to like a Reality Smasher, uh, however it has one less toughness and it doesn't have the ability to protect itself. Um, but it's a little bit more versatile, so I might try this card out, but I feel like it's probably not quite good enough. Uh, it is a warrior, so maybe it has some kind of synergy that could be useful. It seems like an okay card, but I don't have high hopes for it in Constructed. Shatter Skull Minotaur. A 6 mana 5 4 Minotaur Warrior. It's uncommon. It costs 1 less to cast for each creature in your party and it has haste. 
Okay, so probably not constructed playable, but in limited, it's a six mana five four haste. It's not terrible in that regard. However, let's say you have two creatures in your party, it would be only a four mana for that, which is getting to be pretty good. If you have a full party, it only costs two, which is great. Uh, yeah, I think this card is pretty good, and I would, I would play uh, maybe a couple of copies of it. Good for limited. Shatter Skull Smashing got a Mythic X spell, so it costs X red red as a sorcery. Uh, it deals X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. If X is six or more, it deals twice X damage divided as you choose among them instead. And on the back side of it, you get this land that you can pay three life and it comes into play untapped. And if you don't pay the three life, it comes in tapped and it taps for red. Okay, so it's the red version of this mythic land cycle. At this point, it's like it's really hard to evaluate these these cards with lands on the back of them because they they might all just be amazing, but the spell parts are kind of underwhelming so far. Like this one, I think, is a bit underwhelming. Uh, so say X is, I don't know, 3. So it deals 3 damage divided up to 2 target creatures or planeswalkers for 5 mana, which is quite bad. If X is 6 or more, then it deals uh, basically 12 damage divided. But at that point, you're paying 8 mana for this. But then I guess you have to look at it in the way as it's potentially a mountain that you can play for free that has a spell on the back of it. So in that regard, it could be good. Um, right now I'm not excited about it, but if it is possible to just throw this in in place of a mountain and have this spell that you could use sometimes, then then maybe it's great. I'll, get, I'll definitely give it a try anyway. Uh, Sizzling Barrage, a 2 mana common instant. It deals 4 damage to target creature that blocked this turn. So probably not going to see much play in Constructed, but in Limited, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's a good removal spell. Uh, it's a bit limited in that the creature has to have blocked this turn. So that's actually a fairly significant drawback. Uh, one thing is if you're attacking with a creature that has Trample and you use this, uh, then you're going to uh, get through with some Trample damage, which could be useful. Uh, this one I'm not super excited about, but I would probably play one or two copies of this, I think. Skyclave Geopede. This art is a little bit creepy, but uh, let's see. It's a three mana uncommon insect. It's a three one with trample. It has landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Skyclave Geopede gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Interesting. So as a three one for three, it has trample but I feel like it's probably not going to see much constructed play. In limited though, this does seem pretty good. Uh, so with just one landfall trigger, it becomes a 5-3 trample for three, which is very good. If you can somehow get multiple triggers, then you can start going nuts with this. I definitely like this card a lot in limited. Uh, I think in constructed, probably not quite going to get there. Sneaking guide. A 1 mana common goblin rogue. It's a 1-1. One, one. You can pay 2 and tap it to have target creature with power 2 or less. Uh, can't be blocked this turn. I think I don't like this card. It's a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's a goblin rogue, so rogue counts for party. But at the same time, you have to pay mana and tap it to use its ability. Uh, there was a card similar to this in... Was it M2? 20, I think. Uh, it was a 3 drop that had haste. It was a 2-2, two, two, and you could just tap it to... It was just the same ability. Uh, and that card was pretty good in limited. But the thing is, you didn't have to pay mana for it, and it also had haste. Um, yeah, I think, I think the main thing holding this back is that you have to pay mana to use its ability. I don't really see myself playing any copies of this unless I'm really strapped for creatures. Song Mad Treachery, a 5 mana sorcery, it's uncommon, 
gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, gains haste till end of turn. So this is a 5 mana threaten. And then on the back side, you have a land that comes into play tapped. I'm not super excited about this card either. It's probably pretty good for limited, actually. Uh, just because playing a tap land isn't such a big deal. Uh, so it's kind of a tap land that you can play and get a free spell on the other side of it if you need it. Uh, however, in Constructed, uh, just the fact that the land comes into play tapped kind of keeps it out of aggro decks. I think it's probably not going to see much Constructed play. Spike Field Hazard, a 1 mana instant. It's uncommon. Spike Field Hazard deals 1 damage to any target. If a permanent dealt damage this way, would die this turn. Exile it instead. And on the back side of it, you have a tap land that taps for red. So this card is pretty interesting to me. It's an instant for one mana. Uh, that's pretty good. And it also exiles things which are killed, which is quite relevant actually, because you could use this. Like it only does one damage, but you could use it to get in like the last one damage that you need that you need uh, after combat or something to exile a, a creature that could be problematic from the graveyard. In an aggro deck, the the, these tap lands, they, the lands coming into play tapped, they really turn me off of using these things in an aggro deck, but in, say, a mid-range or a big red deck, I could see this, actually I could see this being pretty useful in a big red deck where having your one of your lands come into play tapped isn't so much of a cost. Uh, so have, having this to uh, use the exile ability could be pretty relevant, so I could see this being maybe a sideboard card in either a mid-range or a big red deck. And I would definitely play this in, in limited. Spitfire Legek, a four mana common three four lizard. It has landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Spitfire Legak deals one damage to each opponent. Um, a little bit underwhelming, I think. A three mana three four is fine, but not great. And the landfall ability is also just fine, but not great. Uh, definitely not for constructed and limited. Uh, I would play this. I wouldn't be excited about it, though. Uh, probably I would try to have at most one copy of it. Although, if I did have multiples in play, then the landfall trigger starts dealing two damage, which makes it seem a little bit better. But at the same time, I feel like there's probably better cards I could be playing. Synchronized Spellcraft, a 5-mana common instant. Synchronized Spellcraft deals 4 damage to target creature and X damage to that creature's controller, where X is the number of creatures in your party. So probably not going to see Constructed play, but in Limited... Seems fine, I think. 5-mana uh, for 4 damage is a, a little bit high on the mana cost, but it is an instant, so that makes it a bit better. Uh, and... I feel like uh, it'll probably be fairly easy to get uh, at least a couple, maybe three or even four members in your party. So if you spend five mana to do four damage to a creature at instant speed and then get maybe two or three damage to the opponent, it seems pretty good. I would play at least one copy of this. Teeter Peak Ambusher, a two mana, one three common goblin warrior. You can spend three mana, two and a red. And Teeter Peak Ambusher gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Okay, so we've seen many different variations of cards like this. Uh, this, These never really see play in Constructed, but in Limited, it's fine. Uh, it's a it's a two drop with three toughness, so that's relevant. Uh, having having uh, more than two toughness on your two drop uh, usually can make a big difference in the early game, preventing things with uh, two or less power from getting in for some damage on you. Uh, the fire breathing ability is three mana is a little bit much to pay but at the same time you get plus two plus zero instead of plus one plus zero so it's pretty decent uh as a two drop in limited i'm fine with this card i, I would play uh one or two copies of it probably thundering rebuke it's a two mana uncommon sorcery thundering rebuke deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker so this seems pretty good. Uh, I feel like this will see some amount of constructed play. Definitely in limited, if you play as many copies of this as you could get. Uh, just the only thing that holds it back is that it's a sorcery. Um, but it can do damage to creatures or planeswalkers. Uh, so the card that I would compare it to is Lava Coil. Uh, however, Lava Coil does not hit planeswalkers. 
So this has a little bit of a bonus in that regard. However, Lava Coil exiles where this does not. Uh, so similar to a Lava Coil, but a little bit different at the same time. But I feel like this will see play in Constructed. Thundering Spark Mage, a 4 mana uncommon human wizard. It's a 2-2. Two -two. When Thundering Spark Mage enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of creatures in your party. Uh, so this card seems pretty good to me. It's a little bit similar to uh, a Ravenous Chupacabra, I think. It counts for itself for the party, so it's going to do uh, at least 1 damage to something, but could be upwards of 4 damage. Yeah, I guess uh, it's also similar to like a uh, Flame Tongue Kabu. Uh, this card seems quite good in Limited. I think in Constructed, probably it won't see play, but you never know. Uh, if, if there's some kind of awesome party deck, maybe it could fit in. I feel like it wouldn't, but uh, you never know. Right now, it seems like a good limited card. Tormenting Voice. Uh, we've seen this many times, and here it is again. Uh, it's a good card, sees play in both Constructed and Limited. I'll just say I like this art in particular for the different arts that have been on this card. I think it's a little bit humorous, but at the same time cool. You got a goblin and a dragon on it. I like the art. Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort. Three mana common wall. It's a 0-3. It has defender and reach, and it says creatures you control have haste. Probably not going to see constructed play, but in limited, uh, it could be pretty useful. Paying three mana for this is a little bit much but at the same time giving all your creatures haste is quite good actually you know what it's probably pretty good and limited and also having reach is quite relevant um yeah i feel like this card is is probably good for limited velicut awakening a three mana rare instant put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library then draw that many cards plus one on the back side is a tap land that taps for red. I think out of all of the red cards that have lands on the back, this one seems the best so far. Uh, because paying 3 mana at instant speed for this effect is actually fairly aggressively costed, I think. The, I think the, the big thing about this is that it's an instant and not a sorcery. If this was a sorcery, it would seem pretty, un, un, it would seem pretty underwhelming, I think. But... Uh, yeah, I think, I think this is a good card. Uh, I feel like I might try it out at some point in some kind of red deck. Probably not an aggro deck, but hmm, maybe even an aggro deck. You could just replace one of your lands with this. Uh, yeah, definitely a good card. I'll keep an eye on this one. Velicut Exploration, a three mana rare enchantment. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Also, at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Velicut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard. Then Velicut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. Okay, so there's kind of a lot to digest with this card. Um, let's see. Three mana enchantment. It's a rare... So this is a card advantage engine. You can trigger this multiple times per turn if you have a fetch land or something. Uh, at the beginning. This card seems really good, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's similar to, uh, let's see, things like Outpost Siege. Uh, there was one of the four mana Chandras. Uh, what else? Uh, Vance's Blasting Cannons, I think. It's it's one a card similar to these. A red enchantment that gets you... Uh, Kind of like an impulse draw type of thing but out of all of those this seems the best i think and all of those cards were decent so this card i think is probably quite good actually in an aggro deck uh i think this could be really good as a card advantage engine uh because it costs three mana instead of four uh the ones in the past have typically costed four and and also notably this allows you to play lands some of the cards like this have only let you play spells in the past. So yeah, this card seems really good, and I would like to try it out in an aggro deck. Wayward Guide Beast. A 1-mana rare beast. It's a 2-2 with Trample and Haste. Looks pretty great so far. Whenever Wayward Guide Beast deals combat damage to a player, return a land you control to its owner's hand. 
So this is a card I've thought about a little bit already. Immediately it looks similar to a Goblin Guide, however I think this card is not meant for an aggressive deck at all, uh, because the drawback is just way too much for an aggressive deck. Playing this on turn 1, getting in for 2 damage, and then having to return a land to your hand is just seems like a way to lose the game to me. However, I do see this being useful in more of uh, a mid-range deck or some kind of deck where you want to reuse your landfall triggers uh, because giving this trample and haste means, and it only costs one mana, it means you can kind of surprise your opponent with it where they might have blockers lined up in their mind but then you play this for just one mana and you can get in some damage uh, and then be able to pick up a land uh, so whether you want to trigger landfall again, because you might not have a land in your hand and this allows you to get one back, or uh, if one of your lands hasn't entered the battlefield trigger, you can get some extra use out of that. Uh, that's where I think this card could be useful. So there isn't a deck that I can immediately think of where it would go in, but if there is any kind of deck that wants to reuse its landfall triggers, this would definitely be good for it. And that's the end of the red cards. I think out of all of them, there are th Three in particular that stand out to me that I would like to try out the most. Uh, one is the Mythic Minotaur that can uh, has the landfall that can let you get extra combats. Another is the two mana Sorcery that can do three damage to anything and it has Kicker for five where you can spend essentially seven mana to do five damage to anything. And the last card I'm most excited to try out is the Enchantment that's kind of like an outpost siege, the three mana enchantment that uh, has landfall and lets you uh, do the impulse draw thing. Those cards in particular stick out to me and I definitely like to try them out. But there are other cards as well that I think are definitely constructed playable in red in either aggro, uh, mid-range, or big red decks. And I think a few of them could become staples in the future. But that about does it for this review. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, do you agree with my opinion on any of these cards, or maybe do you think there's a card that I didn't like that you think is pretty good? Uh, I'd be happy to hear what you think either way. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and if you like videos like this, it would be cool if you could subscribe and like and all that, and I'll talk to you later.